Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Donald Etienne. I work from the government. I work uh, as a veterinarian, the county government of Kericho, and also an aff affiliate of uh, the Kenya Field Epidemiology and Laboratory Training Unit, training unit, uh, intermediate class of 2018. My presentation today is about foodborne disease outbreak in Kericho County. Background globally, foodborne diseases are an important cause of illness and death among, among human populations. And they also impair on socioeconomic development of the entire population. As we speak now, there's no sufficient data or information to actually put a quantity figure on the global burden due to foodborne disease outbreaks. Bacteria is uh, said to be responsible for almost two thirds of human foodborne disease outbreaks worldwide. Annually, the CDC has estimated that foodborne disease, diseases are responsible for 76 million human illnesses, 25,000 hospitalizations, and 5,000 deaths in the USA. In Kenya, he said that under reporting inadequate investigation of disease outbreaks and inadequate diagnostic facilities suggest that foodborne diseases are more than what's recorded by the Minister of Health. Uh, in this presentation, I will try to relay the findings about a foodborne disease outbreak investigation and also how interdisciplinary partnership played along to bring out this investigation into perspective. On Monday of the 23rd, August 2021, the Country Disease Surveillance and Response Team notified by the hospital clinician that there were 35 patients who had been reported to the hospital with symptoms of diarrhea, vomiting, and headache. A total of 35 patients, a total of 35 patients uh, were admitted with these symptoms, and later on in the course of the day, 30, a 38-year-old maid passed away. Five patients were immediately admitted. Uh, 29 were treated at the casualty and uh, released to go home. On the same evening, the story was carried on the national media, and now it was uh, a big news. The following day, that is on 24th, on Tuesday, the Department of Health constituted an interdisciplinary team that was having a task of establishing the existence of a possible outbreak of a zoonotic foodborne disease. And the team was, was given a mandate to go to the ground and establish existence of a foodborne disease outbreak and also come with ways of managing it, bring it under control. When the team went to the ground, we found from the key informants that a sick goat had been slaughtered in that village uh, on Friday and meat was sold out locally and people ate it. On further questions, we found that the goat was sick previously, maybe on Tuesday. The owner sold it to a butcher. Then the butcher stayed with it on Wednesday and brought it back to the owner because he realized that the goat was sick at number signs, was bloated, and had funny behavior. So he brought back the goat then on Friday. That's when the owner slaughtered it to recover his cost. So the team that went to the ground to do to establish disease, if there was a disease outbreak and find out reasons as to why had uh, the following composition. We had the uh, human clinical and laboratory staff, public health team, veterinary public health and place of disease surveillance, and also people from the regional veterinary investigation laboratory in Kericho. Also in the team, we had the community health workers, as well as uh, the Mijikumi and the provision on the, the national administration. The main objective of this team was just to describe the foodborne disease outbreak in, a, in, in, in person, place, and time, and also characterize the risk factors that resulted to, to, to people getting in contact with the unsafe food. So this study was done in Soliato Ward, that's in Saint Cigarette sub-county of Kericho County. It lasted from the 23rd when the outbreak was detected up to the 31st when symptoms had resolved. Then uh, we did a retrospective called premium study. 
So we had a case definition because we are doing a line list of people who are exposed. So we were line listing anybody or any person of any age who ate the goat that was slaughtered on Friday on the 20, 20th of August 2021 at, at the same village, at the same ward, so near to ward. Then uh, we commenced to do uh, an active case search the following day. We did a, st a structured questionnaire that was uh, multidisciplinary supported. Also, we had a knowledge, attitude, and practice equations in it so that we could get prongs into all areas where we could uh, generate data. So, sociodemographic variables, clinical and exposure factors were considered. After that, there were samples that were considered for laboratory analysis. There were human samples that were collected in the hospital. And also the RVIL Kericho uh, went ahead and took the environmental samples and screened a few animals within the homesteads. The samples were, the human samples were uh, analyzed using standard culture and molecular typing for pathogenic, pathogenic enterics. This was done at the Walter Reed Human Laboratory Diagnostics in Kericho. Data was collected by training numerators. We got a training numerators. This was disciplinary. It was one setting, and that was entered and cleaned in Microsoft Office Excel. Uh, continuous data was analyzed by measures of central tendency and dispersion. We reported them as mean and median. This data was uh, analyzed by frequency of counts and proportions and presented in tables and graphs. Where we analyzed like, for hypotheses, we calculated the relative risks. Uh, that's uh, in uh, areas where the, the risk factors are epi epidemiological significance. Results. In the descriptive findings, a total of three cases were like listed actively on the ground during the case search. The median age was 27 years. 29 of them were female, that was 54.7%. Then we find that the median incubation period of the disease had a, it was 15 hours. A total of 58% of symptomatic cases sought medical care within 24 hours of onset of clinical signs. And symptoms association period had a median of 5.5 days. So it means the convalescence period was around one week. The table below shows the proportion of foodborne disease morbidity characterized in terms of age and sex. If you look at the between age six and 15, those are children that bore the brunt of this uh, football disease outbreak. And uh, most of them were young children of female gender. Okay, uh, when we describe, uh, we describe symptoms among the outbreak cases so that we could know which ones were more predominant. Of the 53 cases that we like listed, 24 of them came down with clinical disease. And these were the, the predominant symptoms that they complained about. Headache was number one at 87%, followed by the fever 79, abdominal pains, diarrhea, nausea, fatigue, and vomiting. So these ones, we saw them as quite characteristics of a, a foodborne, a bacterial foodborne disease outbreak that we are going to describe here. Then we did a bivariate analysis. We conducted a hypothesis testing a lot of it, and now we found significant uh, relationship on these independent variables. We found that in terms of gender and the residents of a particular village called Kipselton where the animal was slaughtered, this particular group had a higher relative risk of developing disease. So we thought it's a group problem, and maybe the particular behavior of these groups could have predispose them to a risky public health behavior. That is gender in terms of the male were more at risk in developing disease than female, and also the rest is of that particular village. I think uh, their consumption and the uh, utilization of the, the meat in greater quantities could have come to that end. Then we analyze those who eat the roast meat, the method of cooking, category of yes or, or no, because they were eating roast, roasted, some ate it raw, some ate it uh, boiled. So those who ate it roasted were more likely to develop disease than the other methods of cooking. 
than eating tribes, that is the so-called matumbo, they were more at higher risk of coming down with the disease. So laboratory results from human samples went as follows. Eh? We isolated five pathogenic microorganisms of which two were serotypes of E. coli and one was salmonella as shown in the table above. So enterotoxigenic E. coli, we had two isolates. Sugar toxin producing E. coli, we had two isolates. Enteroagregative E. coli, we had two isolates. Salmonella two, and enteropathogenic E. coli, there was one isolate. So it seems like there was a mixed, like kind of infection of pathogenic bacteria in this population. Discussion. After analyzing the data presented before us, we could say that this disease was an outbreak of a bacterial zoonosis disease caused by pathogenic E. coli and salmonella organisms in primary transmission because people ate it directly. There was no, no vehicle involved. Then progression of clinical symptoms as we described them, like incubation periods of 15, of a medium of 15 hours, convalescence period lasting for almost a week, 5.5 days in the median, and the presenting clinical signs of headache, fever, diarrhea, and stomach aches, these are now consistent with the isolates that were confirmed in the laboratory from the human samples. Then children are the greatest, but the greatest burden of clinical disease. We perceived it may be due to the low immunity or lack of exposure to such kind of pathogenic organisms. Males and the residents of that particular village, we perceived that they were a high risk group, maybe due to a behavior that could put them to a public health risk. I don't know whether this is gender, like it was discussed yesterday, that males tend to behave in a particular manner that could endanger them or make them risky to succumb to disease. Like a, in this community, it is a agropastoral community. And people believe that maybe getting a, eating raw parts of a goat is more traditional or more healthier than uh, eating the cooked ones. Because was this, the old guys tend to, to get some organs and eat them raw fast is when the women can go and cook. So we thought that is a risky behavior that was being practiced by a particular group of these populations. Then people having eat, eaten the roasted meat, the tribes, that's the matumbo, or high disease risk due to if you look at the kind of cooking, maybe for the roast meat, there's insufficient heat penetration, and also there's a lot of handling, so that if there was a contamination, it could easily be passed from a person to the food and to the consumer, who is likely more to get ill. And also the tribes, we perceive them to be, to have had a high dose of the, of the pathogens. Because uh, these, the pathogens, the E. coli and the Salmonera, and most of them are enterics, and they are found uh, as normal flora within the, the, the fecal material of, of animals. Then we found that health seeking duration was very short. That is, the, within 12, 24, 24 hours of development of clinical science. So we could say that this was due to the severity of this foodborne disease outbreak. Because the uh, health seeking pattern of most people in the society. People tend to stay with the disease, waiting resolution before they seek medical help. But all uh, these ones, everybody just all of a sudden sought medical intervention. Then the limitations to our study was that uh, there was an availability of samples from the social animals so that we could take it also for bacteriology. The slaughtered animals, we could not get even the fecal material, even the hides, the skins, even the bones. Everything was not there. I think. Uh, this one we attributed to maybe there was a kind of a destruction of evidence because people are now apprehensive. A person had died in this village. The person who slaughtered the animal is a pastor and also has got a lot of influence. Then he was also under arrest by the police. By the time we were going there, he was already arrested. So we thought that the, the villagers were now trying to conceal uh, so that we don't break through with any investigation that could put him at the center of this whole thing. So that was a limitation. We could not directly link the animal slaughtered the food to the pathogens found or isolated within the human population. 
So what are the public health actions and the importance of interdisciplinary team response that we played? From 23rd, when the case, the first cases, the outbreak was detected, and interdisciplinary team was constituted. That was the veterinary, public health, medical, laboratory, and all of us. We came together and we played a, a very pivotal role in the detection of the disease outbreak, verification of diagnosis and confirmation of disease in the, in the laboratory. The case designation, we worked on it as a, as a team. We designed and structured questionnaires. This also included the knowledge edited and practice about animal health, about public health, and health seeking behavior of people in the population. So it was a, a very big study. Some of the findings we've not reported here. So we also did a tabulation and orientation of data in time, place, and person so that we could describe uh, actually what was going on. Then there was formulation and test of hypothesis. This one, we did it because the interdisciplinary approach was very important, like in case of epidemiologic consultation. The medical side was the one that was leading this team, but now the veterinary side also came in to bring out epidemic information that could help develop hypotheses, actually to determine risk factors that could have led to the development of the foodborne disease outbreak. Then, uh, as a team, we, we conducted the implementation of control measures and then we communicated and disseminated the findings about the foodborne disease outbreak. In conclusion, I can say that the foodborne disease outbreak was caused by pathogenic E. coli and salmonella bacteria. And this was rapidly managed, checking the importance of having a coordinated county to display one health team. Public health risks behaviors in gender and geographical defined groups. Increased food handling, inadequate cooking time, played a major role in the foodborne disease outbreak. Then we can say that children bore the greatest health burden of the foodborne disease outbreak. In a recommendation, we are recommending continuous public health education on food hygiene practices and change of attitudes regarding public health risk behaviors. This may be attributed to particular groups like uh, men or particular groups in the village. Then uh, we also recommend that there should be anchoring the county one health interdisciplinary teams on disease control policy in each and every county. So that uh, thereby giving it a formal institutional platform for efficient communication, coordination and leadership. Because without leadership, an interdisciplinary team cannot work harmoniously. Like, uh, the one we did because we did not have a formal platform to carry out this work. I want to acknowledge the county government of Kericho, Department of Health, led by our epidemiologist, Dr. Kigen Tabu, who coordinated this work, our director of veterinary services, Dr. Kirui. We also want to thank Walter Reed Project, medical research institute in Kericho, for having done the laboratory work, isolation and, character and the characterizations of the various isolates the molecular work. Then we also want to thank the RVL Kericho because they try to do, look at the environmental samples to screen some animals with this same population and to, to see the, the spread of the pathogenic organisms in the environment. And uh, least one, uh, last but not least, the Kenya World Health Conference for having uh, given us this platform to further disseminate this information to the general populace. So those are some of my references. In the picture form, this is a, we are doing key informant interview at the Ward, World, the special grounds. And this is the RVL team. They're trying to pick some environmental samples for laboratory work. I say thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Daktari. There are several questions that have come through from uh, the chat. I can see Dr. Kisiru has tried to help you uh, address some of them. Uh, but if you can, just go through the chat and uh, address those questions because we are pressed for time. I think the important thing is the fact that you have elucidated that uh, anchoring the county one health teams in the county is critical and important. And I think it's a discussion that we'll be having with the panelists uh, at the policy level uh, when Dr. Baraza will be leading. Uh, 